Okay, so we agreed that ideally what we would want yeah, is we want the Nehru to be as low as possible. Yeah, so if we could get if we could get the Nehru to naught or one percent, what that would mean yeah, is that we could reduce actual unemployment. We could get the actual level of unemployment down to naught or one percent without any inflation at all. And um, and that gives the government lots of flexibility to create you know kind of high GDP in the economy, um, improve living standards, and so on. So, what makes the Nehru better and what makes the Nehru worse? Basically, you know, a worse Nehru. The Nehru, you know, the Nehru, the Nehru is going to be worse. Yeah, if it is easy for inflation to start. That's the key point. Yeah? So if it's easy for inflation, if it's easy for inflation to get started, then error will be worse. So what makes it easy for what makes it easy for um, inflation to start? What makes it easy is if it's easy for wages to increase and if it's easy for prices to increase. And what we said when we you know, when we when we introduced this this whole topic, we talked about the importance you know, we, of the wage price spiral and what it is that you know what is it that you know that determines whether wages or prices um, go up. And what we said is that it boils down to how much competition there is. So suppose you know suppose there is you know, suppose there is suppose there is a low competition in labour markets. Now what I mean by that is that workers don't they're not afraid of one another. Yeah? Um, they're not afraid of losing their jobs and so on. So in other words, suppose there is a world in which there's lots of protection for worker rights and so on and so forth, then it's going to be easy for wages to increase. Workers can walk in, demand a pay rise, um, and, and they've got no fear of losing their jobs because there's lots of protection in the form of legislation um, and so on and so forth. It's very difficult to hire and fire. So it's very difficult to fire people. Um, so what that means is that even if unemployment gets to say 12 or 13 percent inflation starts to rise because workers are very very powerful and therefore they can get a big pay rise so low competition that's going to lead to a worse narrow a higher narrow so low competition yeah means worse or higher narrow because even when unemployment is still quite high it's easy yeah for inflation it's easy for inflation to start same in product markets. Suppose there is suppose there is a low competition between firms. Yeah, then what that means is that if wages increase, it's very easy for them to increase prices. So low competition between firms, if there's monopolies and so on, that means that actually it's very easy for inflation to get started, and therefore again the Nehru will be worse. So low competition in product markets again leads to a worse or a higher Nehru. So therefore, you tend to find that in countries like in countries like the U.S., yeah, um, the Nehru is about four percent. In other words, they can get unemployment very, very low before inflation starts to rise. Whereas if you look somewhere like Spain, you know, um, you know, or Greece, where there's lots of employment protection, workers have lots of rice, right, right. Um, The irony is that although they have lots of protection. Yeah, it's it's quite hard to get a job because you know it's it's difficult for the government to allow unemployment to fall below about 10, 11 percent. That's their Nehru. So in the U.S., although you have fewer rights, it's much easier for the government to allow unemployment, the central bank, yeah, you know, to allow unemployment to fall to around four percent. Whereas in Spain, although if you've got a job, you've got lots of rights, um, it's very difficult to get unemployment below about 10 or 11 percent because um, the um, inflation will start to rise. So therefore, if you want to, if you're a government and you want to reduce the Nehru, then what you've got to do is you've got to increase competition in either or both labor and product markets. Yeah, so if we want, yeah, so to decrease the Nehru, one, we'd want to increase competition in labor markets. If you want to reduce the narrow, and what that probably means is making your labour markets look more like the United States. So you want to make it um, easier for firms, you know, to hire and fire. So workers have less job security. You probably want to decrease, you know, 
and trade union power. So these are also the supply side policies that we talked about earlier, um, yeah, er earlier in the course. So we want to make it easier for firms to hire in power, we want to reduce trade union power, we want to weaken the power of workers in the pay bargaining system, because then even if unemployment is quite low, you know, even if unemployment conditions are favourable for workers, they still can't ask for a pay rise. And secondly, we want to increase competition in product markets. So we want to make it harder for firms to increase their prices. So therefore, we might want to engage in international trade, free trade, yeah, um, yeah, between um, you know, one economy and another. We might want um, we might want tough um, anti-monopoly laws. Yeah, so again, making it yeah, you know, making it harder for firms to collude with one another or to break up big monopolies. Yeah, or we might want to we might want to yeah you know, we might want to <laughs> I've run out of space down here. I'll do it over here. Um, we might want to um, decrease barriers to entry into markets, make it easier for firms to start up um, and go and compete um, with existing firms in those markets. And all of those things will make it easier to reduce unemployment without getting inflation, and therefore it will allow it will mean that the NERU itself yeah, is um, lower or more favourable. In other words, we can get closer to full employment without inflation starting because workers are weaker and firms face more competition.